Whoa! <laughs> I was trying to clean... Good morning, everyone. I was trying to clean the screen on my iPad, which is what I use to control the scenes from, you know, the talking to you to going to the, 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 the headlines and this and that. And, you know, I should have known, you know, when you stop to clean the iPad, you're going to press the buttons on the iPad and you're going to mess up your, your intro. Well, that was a fun way to start the week. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. This is Coffee and Headlines, where things happen and we push buttons in many ways and things happen. No, seriously, this is Coffee and Headlines. We get together every morning here on Facebook <laughs> live. Um, uh, Tony says, I scared him. I'm sorry, Tony. I didn't mean to frighten you. Um, we get together every morning live to talk about headlines and stories as they relate to our everyday lives here in Puerto Vallarta as an English-speaking community. We look for information, tips, headlines that um, <clears throat> will keep our feet in the ground, on the ground, but will also, um, you know, help us get more out of our experience living here as, um, as full-time locals or part-time locals. Um, it is always a pleasure to welcome friends that join us on a regular basis. And I see your comments and your good mornings moving quickly and frantically. And that always makes me very happy. It also makes me very happy to see new people join us. Uh, and if you are new, my name is Paco. And we'd love to give you a proper welcome. So um, please take some seconds to write the word new in your comment. And, um, and uh, we will be so happy to... Um, give you a proper welcome. Um, <clears throat> it's nice again to see all your hellos, uh, people that I know, people that I'm looking forward to know. Uh, Claude, good morning. I believe it was you who uh, uh, some days ago mentioned all the diggings that are going on on the airport that is being built outside of Mexico City and what they're finding there. Well, today we're going to have some news about that. Um, of course, it is Monday, so we're going to hear uh, the news that our governor has to share with us regarding COVID numbers. And we're going to take a look at a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, sometimes I scare myself, Michal, I think. <laughs> I don't know about my life. We're going to take a look at other news. I'm going to answer a couple um, of questions or comments that came from you uh, that I think are worthwhile addressing here. Uh, in, in the company of everybody that joins us. And um, I am also going to rant or comment about something. And I already know that I'm going to fuck it up, but I already know that you're going to hold my hands as as, as I try to get it out. Um, let's see. Boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Uh, Oh my God, is this possible? Getting ready for our first big snow. Kelly, that's amazing. That's wonderful. I remember snow vaguely because I lived in Boston for 20 years. 19, really. Um, but I have very, very vague memories of snow. It's been a long time. Um, uh, yes, raining and flooding here. We're going to take a look. Uh, well, I don't know where here is. If you're talking about here as in Puerto Vallarta, yes, Libby, we're having some rain and, and some weather that we need to be careful about. We're going to talk about that. Um, Dan says, I'm watching in real time today because my wife isn't watching the Tour de France. You know, I used to love watching the Tour de France when I was a cyclist. I spent many, many years doing long distance bicycle riding um, when I was living in Boston. And to this date, I'm not so sure that I was crazier about cycling or I was crazier about looking at um, um, 
other cyclists do their thing. And I know that was a horrible, totally dirty, filthy, too early in the morning comment, but cyclists are sexy. They really are. Um, Judy White asks, just curious, how does one become a top fan? Um, you know, I think this has to do with Facebook. It has nothing to do with me, I think. It has to do with how much you engage in the broadcast or how many comments you make or how, how involved you are in the conversation. Um, I have seen those labels and I know that in certain communities I am a top fan just because I have a lot of engagement in other communities. I'm just a mere mortal and, um, and that's fine by me. Um, <clears throat> question from Joe Willis. I saw one of your videos of Marina Vallarta a while back. I cannot find the link now. Can you please share it? I'm going to do better than that, Joe. I'm going to show you how you can find it yourself. Ooh, imagine that. And um, in fact, let me do that now because later on I am going to forget. I am going to open a new tab here on my web browser and I'm going to go to the website www.paco-ojeda.com and here we are and look at that lovely little 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 loop that shows us how to enter a query so we're going to search for Marina Vallarta and let's see if we can find it and I remember doing a walk of Marina Vallarta sometime in the recent past, but I am very sure that it is one of these that is showing up. If it isn't, just slap me. Ah, I'm sure it's this one, Coffee and Headlines, May 8, because that was the day in which I went out shopping, uh, uh, window shopping with my camera. So I'm sure that that's the one that you're interested in. And I've now shown you how to do it. Hooray. If it doesn't work, just let me know and I'll be happy to forward that link to you. Uh, what else do we have? Boom, ba bam, boom, bam, bam. Lots of great good mornings. Thank you so very much. Um, the forest fires in California, that is such a difficult situation. I've been watching the news and, oh, good Lord, it is, it is a complicated thing. Um, <clears throat> Liz Avison woke up to Umbrellas of Cherbourg. You push my buttons in such a good way, Liz, because Umbrellas of Cherbourg is an amazing work of art. And one of these days we're going to talk about Umbrellas of Cherbourg because it is, it is a masterpiece by French, the late French composer um, Michel Legrand, for whom I had tickets, or we were going to go watch in Montreal a couple of years ago, and then he died. It's horrible. Anyhow, um, Kelly enjoyed the show about the tacos yesterday. Yesterday, we, we did a rant on all these recipes that you find online for taco this and taco that, that have nothing to do with tacos themselves, and we had, uh, uh, a, a re we had a really good, good laugh with that. Uh, Paul, let me answer that question uh, when we get to the news section, and I'll be happy to expand on that. If I forget, just slap me with a message, and I'll be happy to do it. Um, I will try that on my own time. <laughs> Anyhow, um, there's a lot of stuff to go through today. It is Monday. Mondays are always very, very busy days because there's the news about COVID and all kinds of other things. So let's just get started with the news and um, hold each other's hands as I fluff a complicated commentary that I want to make in a little while. But first, we start with the latest from our governor, uh, Enrique Alfaro, as every week he updated his numbers on Sunday afternoon. And he says to us, thanks to the individual responsibility of all the people in Jalisco, our indicators for COVID-19 are better than last week. Uh, from 26.1% of uh, hospital occupation, we went down to 259 and from 326.2 active cases, we went down to 316.9 per million 
inhabitants. In the national panorama or in the national scene, we continue to be the third state with um, least accumulated cases. We are the 16th state with active cases, less active cases. And we went from sixth to fifth place with the lowest rate of morbidity in the country. This allows us to begin thinking in the next steps to take. Um, while we protect our lives and that of others, of um, particularly the lives of the medical staff that is looking after us, we are going to continue to move forward with the reactivation of our economy. Let us avoid uh, spreading the disease, let us avoid death, and let us avoid the emergency button. You know how to do it. So this is all really good news, or at least they sound like good news. Let's look at the charts themselves. Here we have a comparison. This is last week's chart, which shows us indeed that um, the hospital occupation was at 715, and it is now at 708. And the number of active cases went from 326 to 316.9. So slight decreases that shows us that things that I think we are going in the right direction. Um, this is the chart for active cases. There is Jalisco, uh, Baja California Sur continues to be the state in which the number of current cases per 100,000 inhabitants is quite large compared to all the other states. When we look at accumulated cases, Mexico City tops the chart. We are all the way down here with um, 257 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. And morbidity continues to be on the lower side with Mexico City having the highest uh, numbers of morbidity. Locally, we learn from Vallarta Opina that um, September began with a decrease of cases in Puerto Vallarta. This is also good news um, to hear. And um, we also learn that the government, both national and um, both statewide and locally, continue to address businesses that are not following guidelines. In the city of Guadalajara, 293 businesses have been shut down or clausurado because they are not following the proper sanitary guidelines. And in Puerto Vallarta, we learn that the police is making sure that late night venues close at two o'clock in the morning as they're supposed to. This is all the late night bars and so forth and so on. They are not allowed to operate after two o'clock in the morning. So this is all very good news, but I also saw this that showed me a little bit of, gave me some pause to think about. In Europe, they are, in, in Spain particularly, they're calling this, uh, they, they've coined a phrase that is the, the bar and restaurant effect. And in Spain, they find that the excessive opening of bars and restaurants can have big repercussions for the evolution of the epidemic. Apparently, the numbers have started to increase in uh, in Spain again. So um, I can only hope that our local authorities are taking the proper measurements, the proper measures rather, to make sure that this doesn't happen for us. Um, let me take a quick look at your comments. I knew you would push my buttons. Um, when I talked about my lust for cyclists, you guys are too much. Um, and no, I don't like to be slapped. I just like to be corrected gently every now and then. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, there's another answer here for the, the being a, a top this that and the other on facebook again i don't i don't know exactly how these things work let me continue with the news as long as we're here uh this uh as i mentioned earlier there's been some construction uh findings uh, or rather some findings in the construction of the airport um for to address the question about what's going on with the airports before mexican president andres lopez obrador took office, there was already a huge, a gargantuan 
gargantuan project for a new airport taking place in uh, the former lake, uh, parts of the what used to be the Lake of Xochimilco. And um, this particular project involved contracts that were pro offered to companies that were going to profit excessively. Uh, and this new airport was already in construction. In fact, most of the foundation for the new airport was already built with concrete, was already put into place. And then came Presidente Andres Manuel López Obrador. And when he took office, one of the first things he did was, uh-uh, we're not having that airport because that airport is going to benefit a bunch of people that should be benefited. We're shutting it down. And the Mexican government waged the cost of shutting down all those contracts and uh, <clears throat> and starting from scratch. And the government of Lopez Obrador decided, um, no, nope, we're not giving you an airport in which only a few are going to benefit. And of course, the, the opposition, the opposition parties went like, oh, my God, how can you do that? And he did. So the airport project was transferred to a uh, 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 Navy, Navy, no Navy, that's uh, not Navy, not Navy. Navy is in the ocean. Uh, an Air Force base that Mexico City has in a place called Santa Lucia. So the, 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 this particular location is being built and expanded to become the new um, international airport for Mexico City. So we have all this work going on in Santa Lucia, but what's, what has happened in Santa Lucia is that they have found over 200 remains of mammoths. These are the big, ginormous, prehistoric, elephant-like creatures. Um, and this is the largest deposit of mammoth remains that has been discovered in the world. These animals went extinct uh, between 10 and 20,000 years ago. Uh, and they have found other, other remains as well. So the people that are building the new airport are working closely with Mexico's National Anthropology um, Institute to make sure that the remains can be preserved properly. So I hope I am addressing um, the questions that you had about this. Um, and I see somebody that has made a uh, correction. Thank you very much. It is in the Texcoco Lake, uh, not in Xochimilco. Thank you very much, Marco Antonio. I knew it was one or the other. Um, anyhow, the location of what was, what was going to become the new airport is now going to become some kind of ecological park. And they haven't... Um, uh, specifics about this has not be, have not been made available to the public just yet. The government is presently looking at plans and options. So let's see. In other COVID-related news, um, I was charmed by this particular news item uh, in which in the city of Toluca, this uh, wedding gown and quinceañera gown designer has... Um, uh, taken advantage of a trend and she started making these beautiful uh, face pieces for ladies that are getting married or ladies that are going to celebrate their 15th birthday. As you know, the 15th birthday is a huge celebration in, um, in Mexico. So uh, this is wonderful to see. I think that we can file that one under when life gives you lemons make lemonade. Let me take a quick look at your comments before we move on to weather and whatnot. Um, boom, beam, ba -dum, bam, boom, bam, boom. <clears throat> there is a club near Son Hotelera Norte that has been going on nightly till 3 a.m. I am not surprised, Ligia. It is difficult. I hope I said your name properly. It is a complicated issue because the maneuvering that must be going on between club owners and reglamentos and the city officials and, and favors and stuff like that, it is, it is something that I don't know the, the details about, but it most definitely is a complicated matter and one that ultimately puts all our lives at risk, unfortunately. Uh, Let's see, let's see. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. 
bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, mammoth tacos. Um, I don't think so, Alan. That meat is probably not very good. Um, anyhow, let me uh, let you know that. Um, okay, so, oh God, I'm going to fuck this up. I get great feedback from you um, either through Facebook or through the the inquiry page on the website, I get all kinds of, uh, of of great comments and suggestions and so forth and so on. And they can be divided into two broad categories. There are those of you that share things that could be useful for the community. And then there are those of you who are looking for answers for yourselves. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those. They're both important and they're valid. Now, for me, for better or worse, whenever I interact with you through Coffee and Headlines, um, I always think about the way we carry on as how I would carry on as a guest in somebody's house or how you would carry on as my guest. And sometimes I even think about what my mother would think about the choices I make into about people that I let into my space. Where am I going with this is that there is a number of us that work in the service industry. We are either owners of hotels or we run bulletin boards on Facebook and uh, or maybe we work in the health industry and I'm thinking specifically about people like my friend Paul who has a hotel or my friends Joey and Isaac who have a, a gay guide magazine or my friend Jet de la Isla who has a very successful um, group on Facebook or Trisha Lyman or uh, Pam Thompson. Um, for better or worse, we have two things in common. We thrive on creating connections for the community. Um, number two, we have personal lives and we have public Facebook pages. And, and number three, we have a private life of our own. And it is this last part that always makes me laugh because sometimes I get inquiries on my personal Facebook page that make me wonder, well, who is this coming from? And then I look at the at the history that I have with this person in terms of conversations. You know, maybe we've been friends for a long time, but I'm having a pothead moment and I'm forgetting it. Um, but then I look at, at when somebody asks me a question and I scroll up to see what we've talked about in the past. And the conversations have been about this particular person or people wanting something and not giving something back. So Again, you know, I understand where different people come from, but I've come to realize that there's certain types of interactions that I created in my own private personal Facebook page. And I will take responsibility for that because I allowed certain people to be my friends that in hindsight, probably I don't have much in common with. So let me give you some specific examples of this. Um, I had this, this great, great comment that came from someone that reminded me of the mustard or ketchup scam. And we need to talk about this because this is September. It's a month where people are more needy of cash and stuff like that. So this is a very common scam that happens in supermarkets or out and about where unfortunately somebody will come about and squirt you with ketchup or something. And then other people will come close to you and will say, oh, oh, somebody squirted your ass with ketchup or you you got soiled or whatever and then they will try to clean it up or help you by cleaning it up and before you know it your wallet is gone or your belongings are gone and so this particular person uh shared this with me because this person felt it was important for the community and i am so grateful for that and i am happy to share this information and um, and there it is. So if you find yourself out and about and all of a sudden somebody looks at you and says, oh, my God, you're covered in ketchup. Be very careful. Be very careful. These things happen. Uh, they happen everywhere. They happen in other cities. So it is important that you uh, know about this. OK, so that one is a good one. Then there was this very nice lady. I don't have the comment, but um, uh, oops, not didn't mean to do that. Um, 
there was this very nice person that sent me a note and said, you know, I saw this great article on the New York Times and I thought of you and I thought you might enjoy it. I love those kinds of questions because they come to me. And, and I appreciate that because what I hear people saying is, I'm thinking of you. And I love that. And then I have this question that is a perfectly good question too that I got from a reader saying, I recently moved from Zona Romantica to Grand Venetian. Um, I am a single woman. Is it safe for me to run along from uh, Grand Venetian along Pitiyal River east in the morning? Or would you not recommend it? So this came to me on my personal Facebook page from someone that I've only had maybe two, three interactions at most. And it is a perfectly good question. And I will address it in a second. But I imagine myself walking into my neighbor's home and knocking on his or her door and without really knowing each other, asking these questions. And I think to myself, well, my mother would frown. My mother would frown. And then I ask myself, well, how would Trisha Lyman, how does Trisha handle all the questions that she gets? How does Pam Thompson handle all the questions that she gets? How does Jed De La Isla do it? I just saw a comment here from uh, when, when from Geoff saying and it's, it's difficult when people forget that we have other lives. And what I've come to realize from this whole big thing, and I'll be done in a second, please forgive me, is that I don't want these kinds of questions on my personal Facebook page because I would never like bump into your living room and start asking you for things without having some kind of rapport with you. I am sure that this person that asked this question did not do so maliciously, but perhaps sometimes we forget that there are proper places to ask things. And then, you know, we all are entitled to having some privacy and, and, and some time to ourselves. And again, I am going to answer this. And what I have to say to you, um, single woman that wants to go running around Pitiyal River is this. I haven't walked that stretch in years, so I cannot give you an answer. What I would do if I were you is several things. First of all, if I just moved to Grand Venetian and I'm looking for a new community, I would post the question on a bulletin board there. I would also consider walking down that path with a friend and look for other women that might be doing the, the running or the exercising and asking them, how do you feel about that? Um, these questions make me a little bit uneasy because I don't ever want to provide information that is not true. And I would feel horrible if something happened to this person um, um, because of advice that I gave that was not correct. So again, um, that's what I suggest you do. And I think uh, it's a beautiful path. Yes, I remember it. And it's been cleaned up recently. Um, but please slap me if I ever walk into your home and just start asking things from you without offering some things for you. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Again, I don't know um, how Pam Thompson or Jet or Paul or other people divide the boundaries between their personal lives and their public lives. But I am having a lot of fun removing friends from my Facebook page because it's people that, for better or worse, I allowed into my personal Facebook page. And and this is of this is no fault of anybody, but we just don't we're not friends. We don't talk to one another. So if all of a sudden you find yourself um, not being friends with me anymore. Please don't take it personally. I'm always happy and eager to answer questions here on the show and to provide answers if I have them that have to do with the community at large, not the wants and needs of single people. And if I fuck that up and you hate me, then I don't hate you, but I do want some time to myself. Let's move on to the weather. the weather and why are we looking at that when we should be looking at this there you go uh it is raining according to carrot weather i'm not so sure that it's raining right now but we've been um having a lot of rain uh, because of julio a new tropical storm and we'll take a look at the map in a second right now it feels like 21 celsius it is 26 
Um, it is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a 100% humidity right now, and there's a 46% chance of rain. And yes, we're going to have a lot of rain today, and tomorrow we'll take a look at that. But first, the weather forecast, we are expected to have rain through the day. We're going to have rain in the evening tomorrow, and rain until morning um, on, on early Wednesday morning starting again in the evening. Now, why are we getting all this rain? Well, we have this tropical storm that has been um, causing trouble. It's His name is Julio, and he sort of came and went through the weekend while we were discussing, uh, discussing disgusting recipes like taco salad and taco pie and taco quiche and taco dip. Ew! Um, anyhow, there's the path of the storm. Um, it is now Monday, so it's going all over the place. And if we look at the windy chart, we can see here is the storm. But if I switch to rain mode, check it out. We have all this pinche rain that is lingering all over our area. So that is the rain that we should be careful with in the next day or so. In Sayulita, uh, over the weekend, it rained for three hours, and look at that poor car. It was towed all the way to the ocean, and it had to be towed back. Uh, so things were not very good for uh, the northern part of the bay, and will continue to be uh, that way. So if you have to be out and about, uh, please be careful and bring your umbrella and do whatever you have to do. Um, Let's see, before we continue with some leisurely comments. Um, oh, this is important too. Thank you very much, Paul, because I know this happened to Paul and it is very unfortunate. Um, when you're close to a bank, if all of a sudden you come back and your car has a flat tire, it is a similar scam. People will flatten your tires intentionally and then they will offer to help. And in the midst of the hullabaloo, they will take all the cash that you have just withdrawn. So be super, super careful with that um, as you're moving forward through this month, which we know that um, that is very critical in that regard. I see a lot of remarks about boundaries. And um, and again, you know, it is, it is not everybody works in the service industry. Not everybody is it goes through this. And I don't I don't take particular pride on being an answer guy. I'm happy to create connections. And I know that my friends, the people that I've mentioned, um, are people that I really enjoy. We enjoy being of service to others. But it is it is interesting how sometimes we forget and and about when we make these remarks or how we make them, which is why some of you chuckle at the fact that sometimes I get ugly and rawr, here on Coffee and Headlines when some people comment in a way that I find insensitive. Well, it always boils down to, you know, if you were sitting in my couch, on my couch, in my, on my couch, if you were sitting in my living room, how would I feel if you acted that way? You know? Um, oh, I forgot to add to the, to that commentary. Last week, somebody, uh, again, somebody corrected my English and, um, uh, and she started her, again, I scrolled at the number of messages that we've exchanged. And, you know, if, if one of my dear friends tells me, well, you know, you, you, you messed up that word or that or the other is because we have the we have that rapport. But when a perfect stranger comes into my house and says, oh, I'm going to start nitpicking, I know, but you should not say this word. You should say this other, you know, a part of me goes like, well, thank you. Then another part of me goes like, who are you? And what makes you think that it is polite to walk into people's spaces and comment on the way they dress or the way they talk or the way they move? And number three, how the fuck is your Spanish, bitch, is the third one. <laughs> so, um, again, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too weird. Maybe I'm weird. I don't know. I don't ever correct anybody that I don't know because I think it's just not polite to do so. If you ask for my opinion, honey, you're going to get it. But I don't know. Enough of that. Enough of that. Let me see. More questions, more comments. Uh, da, 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 da. There you go. There you go, Logan. There you go. 
Uh, Tony asks, what site do you get the weather on? Well, you know, I've been using Carrot Weather for some time, and lately I started using this awesome website called windy.com. That's the one that I've started using as of late. Uh, again, it is called windy.com, and I find it to be super, super wonderful because that's the one that creates all those interactive things. Um, more comments about ban boundaries. Pinche rain. I love the rain. Well, it's only pinche, uh, Sean, when you uh, when it drags your car into the ocean. Um, otherwise, we, we love, love the rain. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, my wife gets asked all the time by total strangers why she's in a wheelchair and then they get annoyed when she won't answer them. Well, it, that, that I can certainly empathize uh, with that, Dan. I would hate to be pregnant and have people just feel compelled to touch my belly wherever I went, which is something that is so commonly done here in Mexico. So as if you were a chihuahua or something, it's like, oh, look at your belly. Oh, cool. Look what a cute little belly. You know, I would never put my hand on a woman's pregnant tummy. Ah, oh, but it happened so much. Anyhow, too early to be ranting. Too early to be ranting. Um, Vallarta, Heather Wilson laughs because um, we, 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 we go back so many years. And uh, I love you. I love you, Heather Wilson, because you are as fucked up and crazy as I am. Um, maybe more so. And that's what I love about you. I love you and I miss you. Anyhow, uh, let us continue. <laughs> Let us continue with the headlines because there's a little bit more to go and we were already close to uh, uh, 11.06 in the morning. I want to make sure that you know that uh, the Centro Cultural Cuale, the Cuale Cultural Center on the island is reopening their workshops and they are not going to be charged for. They are going to be free. This is a reminder that there are 13 workshops. They have to do with sculpture and engraving and music and other disciplines. And this is all starting pretty much now. Um, so uh, if you're interested in learning about these things, there's photography and piano, guitar, painting for children and adults, uh, drumming, engraving, terracotta sculpture, singing, Latin American instruments, and theater. There are limited, there's uh, limited access and there's different schedules for each one of these, but they are free, 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 free. And this is a great thing that the city is doing. Um, I also want to let you know that Cinemex has reopened their, their movie theaters, but things are not going so well for them, such that they decided that you can now rent the movie theater for yourself. So I don't know if this is actually happening in Puerto Vallarta, but you could potentially go to Cinemex and say, well, Tenet is about to reopen and I want to go watch it. But because I am concerned, I just want to go watch it with my friends. So they have this program called My Movie Theater in which you can invite a maximum of 10 people and a minimum of five to rent a movie theater and watch a movie. You can do this for 1,100 pesos. So if you divide that by 10, the cost is a little bit more than what you pay at Cinepolis VIP. So one could potentially have a movie theater to oneself. Interesting. Um, this one made me laugh. This is none other than U.S. Ambassador Christopher Landau uh, in Mexico City. He decided to go shopping in the famous Mercado de Sonora. Um, in Mexico City, he went shopping for uh, uh, Mexican Independence Day chingaderas to decorate his home. And he ended up buying a lot of things. But of course, he also walked out with his very own COVID-19 piñata. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Maybe he's going to send it to President Trump as a... Never mind. I didn't say that. I didn't go there. <laughs> Um, then there's a store in Ciudad Hidalgo, Michoacán, that decided to create patriotic tortillas using um, artificial coloring. How fun is that? How fun is that? There is, this is, as you know, Mexican Independence Month, and we're going to try to touch base on all kinds of aspects that have to do 
with the wonderful cultural historic implications of Mexico and our gifts to the world. So I thought this is so super cute. Am I afraid of artificial coloring? Ever so slightly, but would I chuckle in uh, having some great tacos on these patriotic tortillas? I would love to do it, actually. And the last headline that I have to share for yourself, for you today, has to do with the story of Maria, the Mexican rag doll. I found this written in English in El Universal, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy learning more about this very iconic um, doll that you can buy at mercados everywhere, where it came from and what the story behind it is. And as always, I'm going to share this with you in the show notes. Um, and uh, that brings us to the very end of our broadcast today. I am going to take a quick look at your final comments and questions uh, to make sure that we haven't missed anything. Uh, uh, thank you very much for that, Kimberly. Sometimes I screw things up. Prepositions I can't stand. I always make, I always mess them up. But the effort and the intention to communicate is definitely there. If you ever don't understand something I said, please let me know. Because I know sometimes the translating machine is not necessarily running at full thrusters, but we definitely want to do uh, a good job delivering the information that we do. Uh, Let's see. Jonathan loves all things weather. Well, again, I'm becoming more and more fascinated by it because I want to share it with everyone, but also because it's such an important part of our lives during the summer months. Um, Linda asks, are the workshops bilingual? I don't have a good answer for you, Linda. But given the location of the of the Quale Cultural Institute, I would imagine that they're mindful of the English speaking community. I would also imagine that this has to do with the individual teachers. Some teachers may speak English and some teachers may not. The best suggestion that, that I have for you is to go take a look at it, pay a visit and uh, and in 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 walk around because it's a beautiful place. It really is a beautiful place. Uh, David, so Tenet yesterday, Tenet opens on Friday uh, here in, in Puerto Vallarta, and I've made up my mind. I am going to go to the movie theaters with my friend Logan, and that's going to be my first outing to a movie theater since the pandemic began, and I am going to uh, to see how that goes. Uh, Kathleen recommends Mulan. I really am curious about that one. This is really wonderful. Um uh, Susie Didmars, please give the spelling of your book that you show. I know it's not Chingonas. No, it's not. It's Chingonario. And let me see if I can bring that up for you to look at. Chingonario. La, 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 la. Bam! Right in front of my mouth. It is called Chingonario, and you can find this on Amazon.com. It is my encyclopedia of all chingona things, and it's all the way over there, so I cannot fetch it. But uh, it's definitely a great book to have if you want to enjoy the breath of waiting, which you can use that colorful expression. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that somebody enjoyed yesterday's music, Michael. Yesterday I shared a bunch of, of YouTube uh, links to great music by Mexican composers, and that makes me very, very happy to create those connections. Michael, you make my day. Thank you so very much. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, Logan's being jealous. And I can help you with that, Logan. Let's talk. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Um, Sandy Fish calls me Pavo. Thank you, Sandy. My name is Paco. And the website is paco-ojeda.com. It is the website that is associated with this broadcast. And the link appears in the show notes in every single episode that we produce. And if you want, because I'm feeling ultra powerful there we go da, 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 bam that's the website where you can find all 
the episodes that we've had where you can use the search button and you can empower yourself to discover all kinds of wonderful things. The website has categories of different entries. So have a really, really good time exploring that. Um, let's see. And is it written in Spanish or English? I, you may be having a conversation with somebody else. Colleen, I'm not sure that I know what, what you're talking about. But anyhow, we've reached the end of today's broadcast. As always, it is a pleasure to enjoy time with you. Um, and it is a pleasure to receive all your comments. It really is. My only wish is that all your comments and questions come through Coffee and Headlines. Um, and I hope that's not much to ask. Uh, there is a request from Michael Evans, that guy with two masks again, as, and in the program notes. Um, do I still have him around to show him? Of course I do. Where is he? Where is he? Face mask. Is it this one? I think I can do this. Watch this, everybody, in case you missed it from yesterday. There you go. And last but not least, I see that Rita is in the house. I've missed you, Rita. I know that you're up north. It's so great to see you. And it's so great to see everybody else. As always, I am grateful for the opportunity to connect with each and every one of you. And my only wish is that you will take that energy forward and create great connections for yourselves with your loved ones, with your community. And I wish that you'll stay healthy and stay happy and stay cheerful and stay patient. And, uh, and if you're in the public service industry, I wish that you will stay kind and let us try to find ways to connect with people, but also protect the, the, the wellness of our own private personal spaces. We all deserve a little bit of balance between now and tomorrow or the next time I see you. Have a really, really awesome day.